I'm going to read my latest correspondence with Brent Spiner, where we discuss Lori McBride. This is dated July 22, 2011. My dear wife, I'm writing to you on my iPad. I just wanted to let you know that I am awake and seem to be recovering. I can barely remember what happened or what was transpiring around me at the hospital. It's all a blur now. I do think I remember you and the other men trying to get in touch with me brain to brain and some other voices I didn't recognize or were those doctors, but it wasn't very clear. I fear the injury may have hurt my ability to communicate brain to brain, whether temporarily or permanently, I don't know. I can talk, but I can barely hear anyone on the other side. It's like picking up a phone with a lot of static. I hope this doesn't scare you. I am devastated. I hope it gets better as the rest of me heals. Please help me. I don't think any conventional doctor is going to know what to do about this. That snake, Lori McBride, seems to own the police around here. I tried to explain to them what happened, and she was briefly detained. But the next thing I knew, I'm, a, I'm awake again, and she's at my bedside with flowers, acting like nothing had happened. The doctor said nothing to her. I wanted to jump out of my skin when she reached out to stroke my hair. I might as well have been looking at a ghoul. I don't know how long she's been here in the hospital. Maybe the whole time. She's gone right now, thank God. I think she's corroborating with the police since a federal agent was called. You can thank Vladimir for that. They're probably going to cover this whole thing up, those bastards. This is all my fault. I am so sorry for this. I should have been more careful when talking to you this way. I was just so excited I was fearless. At times I lost myself so deeply in your words, your eyes, your voice, that I didn't even think to look over my shoulder. I didn't think to close the window when I felt the presence of that McBride mutant creeping so stealthily behind me. She struck like a scorpion. I didn't even feel it. My only thought as I fell to the floor was you. I'm not going to let her win. I'm going to keep writing you because it means so much to me. But from now on, I'm only going to write when she is completely out of the house. I'm not going to try and sneak it if I know she could be just around the corner anymore. As I told you before, boldness should not cross with foolishness. And I've been very foolish with this precious gift of two-way communication we have achieved. I, suppo I suppose love makes men this way sometimes. I'm sorry for the scare. I will talk to you again soon. Don't you worry about me, your strong husband. Brent Spiner. And then here's my response on July 22nd, 2011. Dear Brent, please forward this letter to Vladimir Putin. Very important. Vladimir and I will use our conspiracy law physicians and scientists to rebuild your injured tissues at the cellular genetic level to restore your damaged tissues to pre-injury levels. I want you to know that I can hear you loud and clear in brain-to-brain -brain communications. Though it is possible that not everything you are saying is making it to me. We just had a lovely lovemaking time, and you were explaining to me how you feel your injury affected your sexual performance, but that our scientists were using groundbreaking technology to operate on your brain to rebuild your injured brain tissue using computer satellite technology at the genetic cellular level so that you can give a good sexual performance, even like when you were a teenager. We do have that technology. You explained to me that Lori McBride whacked your head with the butt of a gun and put such a deep gash into your head that it hit and gouged some of your brain tissue. We are using our conspiracy law physicians to use groundbreaking computer satellite technology to rebuild your brain even better than it was before. We used genetic modification technology to rebuild damaged tissue at the genetic level. I think most of what I'm saying or feeling is getting to your brain, but probably at the subconscious level. We may, st we may still need to do further modifications to your brain, rebuilding of brain tissue at the genetic level. I feel that my emotions are reaching you because you are responding to me sexually, though I don't recall that you are responding to my words, but you are responding to my emotions. Vladimir and I are furious about this. Vladimir and I have requested that Lori McBride be arrested as a Jesuit conspirator and be tried at the Nuremberg War Crimes Trial 
on our international broadcast news, a news station that Vladimir and I created to counter all the lies in the mainstream news media. Good news is that some of the mainstream news media is working with us like Fox News. So we may give that bastard Jesuit Lori McBride some well-deserved publicity, but truth for a change. She may get the death penalty, and if so, her execution will be public. This will make the Jesuits furious. So it won't be showed in Florida where I live and may only be broadcast on special channels. However, because you love to hear from me and our brain-to-brain -brain communication may be temporarily hampered, I'm taking the time to write you and explain what I've been telling you in brain-to-brain -brain communications. Thanks for the lovely intimacy we had this morning. While we were intimate, the scientists used this to help them rebuild the brain tissue that Lori damaged when she injured you. It was necessary for us to have sex together brain-to-brain -brain so they could determine exactly how to rebuild your brain tissue at the genetic level. It appears that the injury Lori gave you hit the part of your brain that affects sexual performance. From what I understand, you're lucky to be alive. She had a gun pointed to your head and was getting ready to shoot when police barged in and shot her in the leg. Then she changed her strategy and whacked your head with the butt of her gun and knocked you out. Right before she went down, when the, that is when the police shot her in the leg. They decided to shoot her in the leg to knock her down so we could keep her alive for legal purposes. Once a person dies, we can no longer read their memories and use this memory read as evidence in the courtroom. We need to have this memory read to establish that it was the Jesuits and not Vladimir Putin who caused you this injury. But Lori has so many clones, God knows how the Jesuits may be covering this up. I fear that right after Lori knocked you out that an imposter may have sent me a message because I got some lousy medical advice from you that I did not follow, and I suspect that you were either extorted into it or that an imposter wrote it after you were knocked out. Someone may have grabbed your computer and faked a message to me from you. I want to explain to you a little more about the medicine I take to deal with my entrenched yeast infection. All matter, including the body, has a unique energy pattern. Every nerve impulse in your body is an electric current. Every cell in your body is a mini battery pumping out 70 to 90 millivolts when healthy. Optimize that energy and you optimize your health. Charge your body with the right frequencies and you prevent disease. I use a product that has been infused with bioenergetically enhanced, enhanced pure water base with the correct vibrational frequency that is lethal to candida overgrowth, yet, yet is neutral to the human body. I'm finding this very effective. The problem with antifungals, nystatin, deflucan, etc., is that they in introduce a foreign protein into the protein receptor in the yeast cell wall. Before the yeast family has completely died out from its inability to reproduce, an enzyme naturally, naturally develops to break, break down that specific protein and then it's back. So I'm using a new technology and just started it, and it seems to be working. However, my candida overgrowth is so severe, I may, I may need to be on this for several months before I achieve the correct balance of candida in my bowels. So that's how I'm treating myself now. So it seems to be effective. Remember to forward this to Vladimir Putin. And now I want to write something for Vladimir. Unfortunately, it's going to have to be in English as my Russian is very weak. My dear Vladimir, I received your lovely letter in English. Thank you so much. Please use our conspiracy law physicians to restore to Brent the health he had before Lori McBride attacked him. We must make sure she is prosecuted at our Nuremberg war crimes trial and that the trial is made public. She is a Jesuit and will try to create some story around this to further the Jesuits. We may need to execute her. Make sure this execution is public. That way if a clone of hers pops up, we can arrest that clone as a Jesuit conspirator and establish that Jesuits use cloning technology extensively for criminal purposes. This is necessary because they have used clones secretly for years, and this has furthered their cause. We must expose their use of clones. We must stop this. I'm sure the Jesuits will try to frame their attack against Brent on you, but I know you would never do this to my Brent. Get our best scientists on him and fix him well. Perhaps use our nanotechnology research team from My Conspiracy Law. 
Thank you for your excellent work as Russian head of state. You are my brave hero, my Peter the Great, and my Potemkin. Love always, Gail Cord Schuler, Catherine the Great. And here's another letter I wrote to Brent dated July 22nd, 2011. My dear husband, I know how resourceful the Jesuits are. But my dear, I plan to make a video to help the truth about your relationship with Lori to get out. The public will probably wonder how Lori is able to get into your house. Is she living with you? Or does she use Jesuit brilliance to enter into your home uninvited? The problem is if she's living with you, that makes you appear married to her, and I know she's not your wife. We need to make it clear how she manages to get into your house. So let's clear this up once and for all. Uh, tell me how she manages to get into your house, and I'm going to read your letter on YouTube. I will make a new YouTube video today, and I'll read the letter you just wrote me. I feel this is necessary to protect both of us and our relationship. The public needs to know the true nature of your relationship with Lori and that she is an abusive and cruel woman and one that you would never desire in bed any at any time in your life. If you don't want to go into this, fine. But I just thought it might be a good idea to counter any future lying press releases from the Jesuits about what just happened to you. I have absolute faith in your love for me. But unfortunately, Jesuits are masters at press manipulation and lying tabloid stories, so we have to be proactive. Be careful. I'm not in any hurry. Write it when you're sure no one's around. You can't trust anybody. Jesuits are everywhere. I know. I have to deal with them over here. They've come into my apartment when I wasn't home and gone through my legal files and removed some legal documents from my files, so I know how resourceful they are. And I lock my door all the time and rarely leave any windows open. Love, your devoted wife, Gail Cord Schuler.